regulations under CERCLA to move this site forward. The EPA has every ounce of authority to see that this project does not stall and that that waste is quickly removed from the river. Ideally, I think that a decision could be made and the cofferdam could be built in under two years. I've been covering this story for a decade and uh, heard countless stories of people who saw their relatives and friends sickened. But how important was the designation of a cancer cluster in the surrounding area to convincing When we requested the cancer assessment, uh, the state health department knew that our concerns were around the San Jacinto River Waste Pit Superfund site. But with this site being in a tidally influenced waterway that also sees storm surge and that water can carry this contamination to the north, the agency looked at 257 square miles of, of the river's floodplain and seeing that yet again, we're being designated as a cancer cluster in such a large geographic area signals, we're here, we're still sick, the waste is still here, get it out of there. We'll never know if, in fact, the waste is what harmed our health. But we do know that that is highly toxic, cancer-causing material there, and that for decades, residents of the River Bottom, residents of Highlands, residents of Baytown swam next to this site, recreated on top of this site. So with the cancer cluster designation, you know, we've utilized that as a tool to say EPA in the mere chance that this site has harmed our health, get it out of here. And not just for those of us that have lived here, but for the future generations, for Galveston Bay, get it out of here. Yeah, I mean, we had multiple major weather events We know that there have been releases from the site since the temporary cap was constructed. And in 2017, when we got the record of decision, we, we were hopeful that the process would keep moving and that our community would have certainty. But, you know, unfortunately in the years since, we haven't had that certainty. You know, the water here, it's not clear. You know, if, if there is a storm that disrupts that site or a barge that hits that site, a tugboat, fishing boat, people fish on top of it all the time. Um, you know, if there was something that disrupted that site, it could go unnoticed. It, the contamination could just escape into the murky waters and none of us would ever know. Just for the record, how much of the northern side is submerged in the San Jacinto River? On an average tide, about 60% of the northern site is submerged. And to give you an idea of the volume of waste, there's about 230 cubic yards of contaminated material that's sitting in the river right now. I'm sorry, um, repeat that? Has waste management filed an appeal or a lawsuit or something? Good question. Um, to this decision. Yeah. Right. So, so now the legal process has begun and so the agency will either enter into a consent decree with the parties or they will issue a unilateral administrative order. So going this route, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's not a route where this would go to litigation. Hey, Ken, Greg uh, Grugan was asking about calculations. I know you're kind of, you're Yeah. How many tons of, of dioxin laced waste is there in the I know Ken's done some calculations over the years of, yeah, no, not on the fly. <laughs>
there hasn't been enough sampling after floods in the area. Uh, when there has been sampling, it has shown astronomical levels of dioxin in the river water. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's for the places that it spills over? Um, where it was released. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, because right now, so um, let me scoot over here and show you um, this here. This is the northern waste pit. And so this is the schematic as it stands right now for uh, the construction effort to remove this waste material. And so um, within this copper dam in here, this is where all of the waste material is located above the cleanup goal. And so um, right now there's a temporary cap on this portion of the site. And um, don't be fooled though, it is permeable, breathable material um, with different sizes of crushed concrete on top of it. And um, that will be removed in sections within this copper dam wall, and then the waste will be excavated. I thought that this uh, schematic right here was important to show y'all because it also shows the sand separation area, which is an area that uh, is a smaller area of contamination that's being addressed through another method. And uh, the EPA is requiring stricter protocols on that area as well in this approval. And here you can see where in this, you know, this part of this could change, but um, these are different work stages that they will have on site. So for example, um, they're gonna have stockpile here, right? They, this is something that we pushed for. I mean, after uh, Amelda, it was two weeks before they could get material here, or I'm sorry, it was after Harvey, mm -hmm. um, when Administrator Pruitt came back and told us, that they couldn't repair the cap, though it was at the point of nearly destabilizing, they couldn't repair it because the construction materials were coming down from the Mississippi and were tied up for like two weeks because the Mississippi had a fog advisory. And we were like, are you kidding me? There's a crushed concrete plant right down the road. And so um, after that, you know, I looked at Pruitt and I said, stockpile, why don't you guys have stockpile? Like that is such a simple and sensible thing. And so that's when they began requiring stockpile be kept nearby should a storm pop up and they're working, they can quickly cover it. And so that's also being carried through in this construction phase um, where you can see, you know, they have indicated right here two parts on the pit where they'll bring in stockpile. And all of these items will move as they remediate different portions. Um, also here is reflected um, a dewatering station. Water management and water treatment is one of the biggest uh, things that will take place with this project. It's one of the costliest and one of the most extensive parts of this remedial plan. I have an answer. So a cubic yard is roughly uh, a ton to 3,000 pounds to a ton and a half. So it's 150 okay. tons of... 150,000? Well, if or no. how much waste is... How, how many tons are in the... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Cubic yards in, in the southern? 230. 230,000 cubic yards. So that's southern? A minimum of 230 tons of dioxin waste. Okay. Or, or dioxin contaminated waste. Okay. According to AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> um, I also know that there was, um, there's still going to be some penalties laid out um, for this agreement. Um, if you can speak on it, what are some penalties you are hoping there to be? Sure. There's a lot of questions still about penalties and timeline, and that will be determined in this legal phase. Um, you know, and, and the best we can hope for penalties is that it is enough and it is strong enough to compel the parties not to delay. Um, you know, in past consent decrees um, and, and orders, there have been penalties of tens of thousands of dollars a day. And so we want to see the same. Will it be safe enough now for the Rio Villa residents to return? Ah, that, well, that's a whole other issue. But you know, looking at similar Superfund sites, when the actual source of the dioxin and PCB contamination is removed, the aquatic ecosystem recovers and purifies itself within five to 15 years. So, you know, as someone who's going to be 40 soon, I could see this river safe for a child to fish in it 
and maybe even consume the food uh, that they catch uh, within my lifetime. Jackie, barge traffic over yeah. there has been a big problem or concern over the years, particularly, you know, navigating uh, uh, under good conditions has its risks, but when we have heavy duty weather, we've had barges break loose, crash into the site, and, my, uh, and, and even damage the bridge right there. Does that remain a concern? At least on the south, on, on, on the, uh, the northern? Mm -hmm. Barge traffic on the river is absolutely a concern. In fact, the EPA required that the responsible parties include in their plan additional measures for protecting the cofferdam from barge strikes. And at their first go, it was a, a really uh, simple system that they had put there. Um, one, in fact, similar to the dolphins that were supposed to protect Interstate 10. And so, you know, many of us, including local government entities, weighed in on that and said, that's not enough. You need to strengthen that. And so that's definitely a big concern, a valid concern, and a big part of the project. Uh, and this delay, I mean, it leaves a risk in place because we don't know the size and impact of the next storm mm -hmm. and whether it could uh, sweep out, spread, damage, uh, the exposed northern side, correct? Say that again, Greg. So the, there, there, there is risk in, in this long delay mm -hmm. of, another, of another storm or a storm, uh, I guess, spreading or, 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 or disrupting the current site and spreading the contaminants uh, throughout the area. As long as that dioxin waste sits in that river, there's absolutely a threat and a risk of when it will enter our communities again. What do we expect boots on the ground? Good question. The EPA is not giving me a timeline in terms of when we can expect boots on the ground. Now, once they come to an agreement or issue a federal order, the responsible party is to begin onboarding the contractor and the EPA anticipates about within a year of that, the cofferdam will be constructed. So, uh, TxDOT's about to let contracts for the new bridge in 2026. So how much of that's gonna interfere with what we've got going on? Uh, is that the PEL or the bridge replacement? Bridge replacement. Yeah, because we just met with um, the, one of the directors at TxDOT um, this week, last week? last week uh, and she said that the let for the bridge replacement is 2030 yeah right yeah so um, with that in mind and if if they you know are able to work most of the year excavating this waste I'd say there's a small chance that that site is out of there it's not good to hear about 2030 no <laughs> no no yeah yeah so thank you carolyn you know some of our community concerns are around this area being at sea level. You know, when there's a high tide, the road gets covered. You know, when storm surge is coming in, there are very low lying spots that early on begin to flood. And uh, when the river floods the land here, it has the potential to carry contamination with it. And when those waters calm down, that contamination can settle out of uh, the river water and onto the land. And that dioxin will remain there for a very long time until it is again physically moved. And so, you know, over the years I've had residents call me and say, you know, Jackie, my, my house, just right here on the river bottom, my house flooded. There's all kinds of mud in it. My granddaughter's here helping me muck, muck it out. Is it safe? And my response is, well, I can't tell you it's not unless I test it, but there's a good chance it is. So protect yourself and don't let your daughter or your granddaughter be a part of that. <laughs>
All right. Thank you all for being here.